Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Um, this is Martin Fairman from CMS Distribution. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to be taking you through a slightly more technical deep dive of the SolarWinds Network Performance Monitor product. Uh, with me, I've got Andrew Miles from our marketing department, who specializes in the SolarWinds products as well, who will be uh, keeping everybody in order. Um, as usual, throughout these webinars, uh, please feel free to ask any questions in the questions box in the GoToMeeting uh, box there, and we will do our utmost to answer them. Um, if we can't get back to you during the time allowed today, then we'll do our utmost to get back to you personally afterwards. Um, really just a little bit of a, an introduction. Uh, as I said, this is Martin Fairman. I'm the pre-sales technical consultant specializing SodaWinds at uh, CMS Distribution. A um, little bit about us as a value-added reseller. We are the only reseller in EMEA who has the capabilities to actually demo the SolarWinds products. Um, when we are supporting you in selling the products to your end users and your prospects, we tend to steer away from uh, PowerPoint and actually have the products running live. And that gives us the ability to remove technical barriers immediately and keep a high cadence when actually pushing the SolarWinds products. Uh, forward. Um, what we're going to start with now is we're going to look at the SolarWinds Network Performance Monitor product and we're just going to give you an idea of the topology and as I said a little bit more of a deep dive as to how the product is actually installed and can actually work with your customers. So just starting with how the product uh, is installed in the environment and we're going to start with this center line of uh, machines that you can see on the screen here. In the center here, we've got, um, we've got the Network Performance Monitor products. Now, this is part of the SolarWinds Orion suite of products, and just want to give you a little bit of detail on that. So we've got Network Performance Monitor, Network Flow Traffic Analyzer, Network Configuration Manager, and we're not going to go into those into too much detail today. But the idea of these products is that they can be purchased individually or they can actually run on the same single server using the same database and the same built-in alerting engine and then become, and the term we use quite a lot is a single pane of glass, so that you've got these multiple products working in synergy together, giving an overall network monitoring solution. One of the questions that normally comes up at this time is, what can we monitor? Everything. It's a very... Uh, global statement, but anything that is available on the network that has an IP address and moreover that can support uh, SNMP, then we can pull back some very detailed monitoring. So from a sales perspective, that makes the product very, very flexible in the market. Coming back to this diagram here, um, the network performance monitor, as I said, will poll the uh, end user's environment and take back the network monitoring data and report that into an SQL server because the system has a reporting engine built into it and we can access the data ad hoc there for reporting. Reporting can be delivered in a, a standard web format, PDF, Excel spreadsheet, etc., and even has its own scheduler and reporting uh, uh, report writer system for custom reports that could be scheduled and sent out as required. Now, uh, with regards to the size of customers that we can support, the SolarWinds Network Performance Monitor system, as we can see here, runs on a single server. But from an expansion point of view and from a load balancing point of view, we can actually start to deploy what's known as APES, the additional polling engine. And we can keep adding these as physical or virtual servers to expand these into, uh, into the customer's enterprise. So in this particular example, we are going to be covering what's known as 36,000 elements. What is an element? An element can be a node, a volume, or an interface. So if we talk about the licensing of, of, a, of an element there, if we have something like a 24-port switch that we want to pull back health information from, the node itself has an IP address, so that's one element. Then we have another 24 elements for each interface. And if that uh, switch, particularly something such as a Juniper, has a volume on it as well, and we wanted to monitor the status of those, or it could be a server as well, then that each volume would also take an element license. Now, the very important thing to take away from this is that the licensing side of the product is very, very flexible. 
and you don't have to monitor everything. So if we use the example of something such as an edge switch, this is supplying connectivity into the customer's enterprise, we may only want to monitor two interfaces in that environment. And of course, we're probably not interested in those two volumes. So we can go from those 27 elements all the way down to just three. And we'll give you an example shortly of the type of reporting that we can do from the switch. So as I said, we're looking at 36,000 elements by using a single SolarWinds Orion server and two polling engines. And you can add a total of two polling, uh, sorry, nine polling engines per SolarWinds Orion server. So a true enterprise monitoring environment. So just touch briefly on the failover and the resilience side of the product as well. Here we have the FO, the failover engine. And what happens is that there is connectivity through a second network card in the failover engine connecting to the main Orion server. And we can set variables and KPIs that monitor the SolarWinds Orion server. So if there's a particular problem or a total failure, the SolarWinds Orion failover engine will take over automatically with the same IP address. Now, during the installation of the SolarWinds Orion, you will also get an installation of Internet Information Services, and that will supply a web interface, which is how the majority of administration is handled on the Orion server. Now, I'm just going to take you onto this interface here. So, as you can see, we're connected into my live demo system here through port 8787. That can be uh, done securely through SSL, and you can also choose the connectivity ports that, uh, that you want to connect to. Now, upon the deployment of the SolarWinds Orion system, you will be uh, given this screen of the network sonar discovery. Now, in true blue piece of fashion, here's one I created earlier, and I'm just going to take you through a basic network sonar discovery to just show you how easy it is to add uh, items and elements into the Orion system, and also the type of protocols that we're actually going to use here. Just waiting for my system to come back from lunch here. Bear with me. Okay, so first of all, as you can see, it's all wizards driven. So here is where we will add our SNMP credentials. And as you can see, we can start adding in multiple credentials. The credentials can be any version of SNMP, including version 3, including also the latest encrypted versions of, of SNMP, so all of them in other words. So that means that as we start scanning the environment, we can try the various credentials and start pulling back information about the environment automatically. We will also monitor servers, as I've alluded to already, and you'll see here that we can pull back information from the VMware environment. And we're just using the root username and password to connect into a host server or also directly into vCenter, whatever is easier for your end users. And again, we can take multiple credentials in there. And we support all versions of ESX and ESXi. Just going to bypass the NCM side of things, because that's a product we're going to talk about in another WebEx. And of course, we can also monitor Windows servers using WMI, Windows Management Instrumentation, uh, physical, virtual servers, and also that will pull back information on Hyper-V servers as well. And of course, we can take in multiple credentials also. Now, the important part, the networks. So what we've done here is we've add in, added in a subnet. So we can simply add in the IP address and the subnet mask. Or we can add in a specific range and for the security conscious amongst us, we can also add in specific nodes. So if you wanted to cut and paste the contents of a spreadsheet, or just put in specific nodes so that we don't upset the guys who look after network security, we can handle that also here. The observant amongst you will have seen this add a seed router. Now this is particularly useful for your end users who are going to have multiple sites. Now what we can do here is we can put in the IP address of any layer three device and what we'll do is we will interrogate the address resolution protocol uh, table, the ARP table of that device, and we will pull back the IP addresses that have been seen on those layer three devices, and we can get that to auto-populate this subnet list. So it makes it very easy to discover devices on the other side of a rooted hop. Finally, we've got the discovery settings here, which decides timeouts, 
90% of end users can leave this as is. That's quite an important tick box to use. Ignore the nodes that only respond to ICMP. So that stops you pink, uh, uh, pulling back unmanaged devices, laptops, BYOD devices, etc. And then finally, we have the discovery scheduling side of things where we can run this once or we can actually change the frequency and run this at a predetermined period of time. Now, this is particularly useful for IT managers because as they start adding equipment onto the network, as long as they're starting to use their standard WMI and SNMP credentials, that scan will pick this information up automatically and will, you will then get a notification to the administrator to add those devices into the list. So it makes populating the data into the, information, uh, into the system very, very easy. Okay, just going to cancel out that one. Now a little bit of detail on network performance monitor. So what, what will it look like? Obviously us being the distributors, we have all the different SolarWinds products running in here. Once NPM is actually installed, you would have the home screen, the network screen, which obviously shows all your network information, and the virtualization screen, which shows any virtual machines that have been picked up during that initial installation. The difference between all the three tabs, so the home screen is effectively um, your wallboard, your display of where you can put your RAG, your red, amber, green status of your particular environment. So as you can see, this is our live environment here, and we've got various warnings that are just coming up on the screen here to tell us that there may be problems at those particular geographical sites. We've decided here that we want to monitor the status of a particular interface, so we've customized this screen here, and you'll notice that we have this customized page capability on every single screen so that you can choose exactly how you want the information to be displayed. So that is currently my interface that is connecting me to the internet. I'm using that interface to deliver the, this webinar through it, and I can click on that and start to get more detailed information on the state of that interface if I want to. Okay. Top 10 interfaces by traffic, sorted automatically. So we can see that there's a particular interface here and we're receiving 10.6 megabits and transmitting at 1.36 megabits. On the right hand side here we have all our active alerts. The, of course, the SolarWinds Orion system has its own alerting engine built into it, and we can send alerts throughout through email, um, SMS. We can even uh, raise SNMP, uh, SNMP traps, syslog events. We can make the screen flash. We can do text-to-speech through a particular screen. So we've got a plethora of different methods of actually notifying the appropriate party about any particular alert on the system, be that a global alert or going to a, a specific individual. I've said already, we're also monitoring volumes as well, so we can actually see volumes with high percentage usage. So we've got the particular node itself here, and of course the label. Just going to give you a little bit of an example of the widget system that SolarWinds Orion NPM uses here. And as we start to hover over particular nodes, we get a little widget that just pops up and gives us a snapshot of information about that device. So we can see that's 25.9, it's a Windows 2012 server, and we've currently got an open alert of 92% memory usage. And I could click on that and go into the um, server uh, screen itself and start to look at that uh, system in a little bit more detail. Okay, so let's move across to the network tab, just to give you a little bit more information here. You'll notice that we've uh, also got some sub-menus that come through here, so we always have summary screens and network top tens, wireless information, etc. And I'll go through those in a moment. So here's the summary of all our network devices here, all our nodes which are managed by Network Performance Monitor, and they're grouped by vendor and status. And notice that we can edit that screen directly from here and decide how this information is actually going to be, dis uh, be displayed. Now, of course, as I've alluded to already, we can actually group that information, and you may remember that that information has been grouped and shown in the map on the home page. just want to touch on groups quickly. So again, we can see that we've got various uh, elements that we're monitoring within Network Performance Monitor, and we're adding those into specific groups here. Okay. So if we have a quick look at our guest network that we have here, 
So I've told the Enfield Guest Network to add in our access, our various wireless access points, our ADSL router, and a couple of test switches that we've got running in this environment. And we can get a group alert that tells us when any of those elements have got a particular problem. And we can also see individually at any point in time when any member of that group has failed, whilst that is being supported by the last 25 group events. So we can actually see that there's been a warning on one of our wireless access points here in the past. This information can be put into the group by editing this icon here very simply and we can actually drag and drop these items into here. And what we can also support are active groups as well where we can say in this particular example any IP address that begins with 10.10.1.x then add into the group. So of course from an administrator point of view that makes adding devices into NPM particularly easy because they will then just appear in the group automatically and of course disappear if any nodes are actually decommissioned. To take you through the network top 10, SolarWinds throughout all their products are always very keen on the top 10 as well. So top 10 interfaces by percentage utilization, current response time, including some nodes that are actually down at the moment, top 10 nodes by packet loss, traffic, nodes by CPU load, and again notice how the active widgets still work throughout all of this. Any errors and discards, percentage memory used, wireless clients are monitored automatically as well, and top 10 volumes. And of course the other thing I highlight, all of this can also be customized as I touched on already, so that could be a top 5, that could be a top 25. And that's a great starter screen just to give those who are just rolling out the system a good idea of what's going on in the environment here. Okay. Of course wireless nodes are monitored automatically, and vSANs as well and they will appear within that particular screen as well. Wireless, protocol, uh, wireless manufacturers, uh, a company such as uh, Aruba and Cisco, will be detected through SNMP automatically and will appear in that tab there. Okay, so just going to go back to the main network screen here. Okay, so let's have a look at the type of information we're going to get back from one of these devices. So, just going to quickly have a look at one of my Cisco test switches. So let's have a look at this old Cisco Catalyst device. Notice how we've got a partial warning that we've got an interface is down at the moment. Now the screen that you're looking at here is a standard screen. This is exactly how it appears out of the box and we haven't customized it. So just be aware of how much information you get as standard. So as I said, we're polling this device through ICMP. So we're getting a response time and packet loss. It's just doing its refresh there. And then, of course, we're pulling back average CPU and memory usage as well. Now, as Network Performance Monitor polls this device through SNMP, it will go through the MIB table and it will find that this is the Cisco device and therefore it will know where to find information on the various interfaces. So that means we can start producing this historical multiple object chart and we can see the color coding associated with the various interfaces here. And this interface information is coming back from the Horrid Historical SQL database, and we can see a, a fairly familiar behavior pattern for a core device here. So as everybody starts to log on as they come in in the morning, we start to see more traffic. Obviously notice how busy it gets over lunchtime. I think that tells us all a little bit of a story. SolarWinds NPM also has a, a reasonable element of CMDB content management database built into it so that we can actually report on particular nodes via service tags and model numbers. So we pick this information up automatically through SNMP. If the information is available to us, we can also pull back detailed hardware information such as fan and power supply status. And of course, larger switches and devices which have multiple cores, resilient fans and power supplies, etc., that information will also be reported upon. And of course, you'll notice that is clickable, so therefore we can alert upon it. So if you did get one side of a resilient power supply go down, you will actually be notified. Okay, historical information again being shown. Uh, this is another method, another type of graph that we, graph that we use for CPU load. 
and you can see that we have a little bit of a, a peak at that particular point in time. And we can actually see that we can change the resolution of these graphs very, very easily just by moving the slider to just get a little bit more information about the graph that we're actually looking at. On the left here, more detailed information on the actual node itself, so we can see that interface 3 is actually down, and that is reflected by the interface chart on the right here, and detailed SNMP information such as locations, contacts, etc. The system will also pull back all IP addresses on the device. Uh, one question that normally comes up at this point is that we do support IP version 6 as well. Just going back to the uh, percentage utilization of each interface here. Um, as you can see, we're, we're not monitoring all interfaces, so this, is a, this just gives us an idea of the flexibility of uh, the licensing on here. And let's drill in and just have a look at a bit more detail about this particular interface here. So this is where we're really starting to pull back the detail about this particular item. So notice how we always get a summary at the top, and you'll see that is fairly typical throughout the whole of the SolarWinds Orion suite when you start seeing other products running. So we've got our current receive and transmission utilization for this particular interface. Okay, so that's the latest information that came back from the last poll. If you're actually doing a little bit of troubleshooting on this particular node, you can click that button and poll now. Out of the box, you'll get a two-minute refresh for polling of information from this particular uh, to these particular devices. But if you want to get the latest information, you've just got that button to hand there. That live information is then being pulled into this to the historical SQL database and goes into this graph. So here's another example of the type of information we can go back and concentrate on that particular peak in time. And you'll notice that we can get very granular information from these graphs. Okay, on the left here we can see the interface is up. It's administratively and operationally up as well. So we can differentiate between the two. Got the MAC address as well. When the, the device itself last changed status. And of course the interface bandwidth. You'll notice here that we've got the ability to actually edit this interface here. Now what that allows us to do is start to manually change these variables that you see here. These are populated automatically at the point of discovery when the device is added into Network Forms Monitor, so you never have to actually add those in manually. But the example I tend to use here is that, let's say that that is an end interface that is connecting into something such as a VPLS, or it is the last link into a, a piece of CPE equipment. And one of the challenges that a lot of network administrators have is that they're given a piece of customer premises equipment by their MPLS provider or their ISP, but they're not allowed to be given any management information by it. So this could be the last switch that connects into it. What we can do is we can say, right, our ISP has granted us 20 megabits in both directions. So what we could do is we could edit that interface and tell it, well, even though that interface is capable of 100 megabits, we should only ever get 20 megabits in there. That then means that the receive and transmit utilization will always be accurate and then thus supported by the alerting engine that's built into it. So this is a very, very good tool for keeping an eye on products that are being delivered to you by a third party. Okay, got our MTU in there as well, number of packets per second, etc. Got a list of interface charts as well, so we can actually start to run reports directly from here. So for example, if we wanted to look at the average bits per second in the last seven days, we can run that chart directly from here. Now there we go, we can see the data there and we can change the resolution of the graph directly and get live information from it. Note the URL, okay, this could be every single URL for every single graph, chart and report within the SolarWinds Orion systems are all proprietary. So that means that we can take this information, we can copy this into the report scheduler. All the reports are accessible directly from the web interface where you can edit reports and you can schedule your reports. So it's very simple to actually decide which reports should be sent to which user at a particular pre-scheduled time. 
Also notice down here that the charts are very easy to be customized, so we can give them proprietary titles, default zoom ranges, calculated series, etc., etc. And again, this is very easy to export the data to a third-party application, such as a spreadsheet or to HTML as well. Okay, polling details. So again, the SolarWinds Orion system is self-regulating and self-auditing. So that's telling us how often we're pulling that information back. So there's our default polling interval of every 120 seconds. The Orion system will also log as users and administrators are logging in and out of the system as well. So if somebody adds a, device, adds a node, removes a node, makes a change, that is all reported upon uh, within the built-in auditing system as well. Okay, historical event summaries as well, maximum traffic, etc. Okay, just start at the bottom and scroll up for these graphs. So, minimum, maximum, average packets in and out. Total bytes transferred as well. Any errors and discards. Percentage utilization. Okay, so that's interfaces, and we've looked at a particular node there. Um, let's just have a quick look at the monitoring of a server and the type of information that we can get back from there. So you'll also notice that we've got the ability to actually search for particular items. Okay, so I'm going to let's say it's app four. That's one of my test Windows servers that I have on site here. That can be a contained. You can use wild cards makes it the, the usual search facilities that's available to us. And again, you'll notice that it's given us that information. And again, it is a live widget link. So if we came up with multiple servers, say you search for Windows or Linux, for example, that information will be available there. OK, just wait for that screen to refresh. Okay, so again, this is a Windows server. Again, we're not worried as to whether it's uh, physical or virtual, and we can monitor these Windows servers through uh, SNMP and WMI. And of course, uh, and the question that comes up at this point is, can we monitor Linux? Yes, of course. We just use the standard SNMPD um, kernel that comes with uh, the majority of Linux operating systems. It's telling us here that it is a virtual machine, and as we've looked at already, it's giving us information about the virtual machine that is actually hosting this particular server. So we're actually looking at two different machines simultaneously here. So again, response time and packet loss, CPU load, uh, the status of the interfaces on this particular server. On the node details here, we've got the IP address, including the allocated IP addresses in IP version 6 as well. CPU load history, utilization on the interfaces, response time and packet loss, so we can actually see the historical connectivity status, availability status on the left there. And of course, we're breaking down here that this is an 8-core CPU, virtual CPU, so we're even monitoring all the way down to the status of each individual core on this node here. So that's historical, and just below we have current as well. Now on a, a server, of course, we're monitoring the status of volumes as well. As we say, we're licensed by nodes, volumes, and interfaces. So we've got current and historical data. So I can tell you by looking at this yellow gauge here that a warning alert would have gone out to our systems administrators that this particular volume is starting to get a bit close to 100% usage. Average disk space used today in gigabytes. On the left where we here we have total disk IOPS as well. Again, you can see that we can get that particular granular data by scrolling over it. Percentage disk space used today, average disk per second transfer, volume size, disk queue length. 
case, an awful lot of detailed information on the volumes themselves. Just going to go back to the quick service screen here. And of course, finally, the active alerts that are on this particular node. And you'll see this for all nodes that are monitored. So as you can see, the alerts will go out automatically, but everything specific to this particular node will be positioned on the screen automatically. Okay, now, of course, as I said right at the beginning, we also have the virtualization tab as well, where we're picking up information on both VMware and Hyper-V servers um, using um, the VMware API and, Win and WMI. So I could click on that particular link there, which would take me straight to the specific information on that VMware ESX server, dot 16, that you can see there. But what I'll do is I'll just look, take you to the visual, uh, virtualization tab and this is where you can see all the virtual assets in my demo environment here. So we can see that there's a breakdown between VMware and Hyper-V. For those of you who have end users that are running clusters, the clusters will be displayed automatically as well. We have our virtualization asset summary, number of hosts, number of VMs, CPU cores, etc. And again, broken down by VMware and Hyper-V. Any V centers or clusters that have any particular problems or any hosts that have problems. So for example, we've got a particular host here and you'll notice that the host states there we couldn't poll it. So even though it's not getting any information back, it's telling us proactively that it can't get any information from that particular node. Guests with problems as well. So of course we're also monitoring the status of the guests directly. And moving on the right here, a breakdown of memory usage, hosts by network utilization, hosts by CPU load, and hosts by the number of running VMs as well. Okay, so let's have a look at one of these VMs. I'm going to choose a uh, my demonstration one that's actually running my SolarWinds environment. So hopefully that can put that all into context for you. Okay, so there's the virtualization assets for this particular node here. And there is my SolarWinds server that's actually running the demo that you are watching now. And you'll also notice that anything that has got a green icon next to it here in the virtual machines that are running on this particular host, we're monitoring that as well. Okay. So again, response time, packet loss, CPU, and memory utilization, response time. So you'll notice that everything's very uniform in the way that, is, that the information is displayed regardless of the manufacturer. Okay. Now one thing that I must highlight to you is that the current hardware health section that you can see here is part of the SolarWinds server and application module. So that is an extra detailed server module that will come in another product and is not included in NPM. I just have to make that clear for you. Again, there's a CPU load chart, ESX host details, where we're pulling information back. The node details, again. And this is the extra information that we're getting here on the right about the virtual environment here. So here's our virtual machine memory consumption. And you can see that's actually being broken down automatically by the two VMs that I've got running on that server. So if we wanted to concentrate just on the SolarWinds server itself, we can say that that's taking over half of the memory resources on this particular host. Exactly the same for CPU consumption and of course virtual machine network traffic as well. Okay, of course we can break that down into Hyper-V as well. So you will see that we've got these standard filters built into the box as well and we can get specific information from a Windows Hyper-V environment automatically. Okay, and a couple more details just want to take you through here as well. Now the SolarWinds Orion system also has a syslog server built into it. Okay, and you will see that we're getting information here from, so there's one of our test 
Draytech ADSL routers here. And you will notice that it's putting that syslog information against the host name. So there's all your usual syslog search facilities. Again, that goes into the SolarWinds Orion alerting engine. So if any particular piece of text appears here, you can cut and paste that into the alerting engine and be notified if there is a particular problem. If we do see something on there that's of interest, we can actually click on that host name and that will take us into the node that syslog event is part of. Okay. There's a little Draytech device. And if we come down here, you'll see that the syslog information is automatically put against the node. And it's exactly the same for SNMP traps. A little bit overkill on this node, but uh, it's very good for demo purposes to have both. And it's very easy to get to. Again, we have the SNMP trap screen here. OK, the reporting system. As I said, there's a plethora of reports built into the system automatically. It can be scheduled, and there's also the report writer in here. Just take you through a couple of those reports on here as well. Now, you're going to see quite a lot of reports on here, because, of course, I've got every single product that's actually running on here at the moment. So what I could do, let's say I'm interested in availability. I can just do a quick text search. And I can look at availability for a node for the last month. And I can run that report directly from here. And there we go. So we can scroll through. And we can see that one of those nodes has dropped just below 100%. Anything else exciting here? There we go. There's another node that's dropped. And the important part is, is that these reports are actually live. So in the menu you've seen already, I can click on that and go and have a look at the current state of that particular server. Now, whilst we're talking about the reporting and the presentation of the data, SolarWinds Orion systems are actually designed to work in an MSP, a managed service provider environment. So what that means is that we could actually have multiple customers segregated from each other but all running on the same SolarWinds Orion server. So that gives us the flexibility and capability that particular users can only see particular reports about particular nodes in their environment. So for example, if an IT manager just wanted to know that their environment was up and running, you can give them a basic login into the system. And all they could do is run a couple of reports or have a specific home screen that only shows them the information that they're going to be interested in. And where, of course, in the background, the administrative data, the drill down data is always available to network administrators. OK, so that is the SolarWinds Network Performance Monitor in a nutshell. Just wanted to give you a quick technical overview. Um, just trying to take you into a different screen there. Bear with me a second. OK, what we'd just like to talk very briefly about is about who you can talk to about getting a little bit more information about us. Now, we have a dedicated product manager here, Sedule. Uh, who's currently on holiday today, today but uh, there's her contact details. Um, she can actually help you with sales and promotion of the product. Um, and we can actually come out, and if you're interested in taking the product on a little bit further, we can actually get you guys trained up with Sedule's help on the SolarWinds portfolio of products. Professional services as well, my contact Abdul, we have SolarWinds SCP qualified staff. Uh, SCP is the SolarWinds certified professionals who can actually come out and install the products from the ground up and actually consult on the best products in installing the products for your end users as well. As I said, I've got Andrew next to me who can actually assist you with marketing the product to your prospective end users. And of course, all the technical and geeky stuff can actually be handled by myself. And as you can see, we've got full demo facilities. And we can actually host demos, WebExes, and training for your end users to actually show the products running. Of course, SolarWinds Network Performance Monitor is only part of uh, the, the SolarWinds products. So hopefully at some point in the future, we're going to be running some more WebExes to take you through the rest of the products. And of course, if there are any uh, other particular questions, then please do get in contact with me directly. 
and again you'll have had my uh, email details uh, that were given out to you when the WebEx was sent to you. Uh, the other thing we just wanted to send out to you, for those of you who've actually asked questions, we're actually going to have a follow-up email. This is going to be sent out to you afterwards. And of course, as I said, if you've got any questions uh, after the WebEx, then please do not hesitate to get in contact. Thanks everybody for attending. Really do appreciate your time.